Yo, did you miss me since yesterday? Don't say no. Also, to get heavy on you for a second, with another famous person passing away yesterday due to suicide, it's just a reminder for me to let you know, and maybe I should say this a little more often, that if things are tough, and if you're struggling, go talk to someone. Over communicate, put it out there, and try not to internalize it, because if you do internalize it, that could lead to resentment of yourself, like I'm never gonna be good enough, or, or of others, why weren't you there for me when I needed you? And then a whole range of emotions like insecurity can creep in, but fun fact for you, everyone is insecure. I went and got a haircut yesterday, and it's clear that my hair is thinning out. My hair is thinning out! I mean, cue the panic attack because this stuff on the top of my head is where the magic comes from. But what are you gonna do? What am I gonna do when it's gone? I don't know, I'm gonna wear a hat, I guess. I guess I'm just gonna have to wear a hat, maybe this one, and I'm just gonna own it. I'm gonna own my insecurity by hiding it with this hat. Now I need to be proud, proud! No hat. Also, feeling inadequate or depressed or however you want to define it can come at you in so many different and perhaps surprising ways. And I think I've mentioned this to you before, but after I got to play in a World Cup and proved most importantly to myself that I could hang with the best players in the world under intense pressure, what else was there? I did it. I fucking did it, man. It was amazing. So it was hard for me to be as motivated as I once was, and I was in a funk. Like, I have to sacrifice everything for another four years to play in another World Cup to prove what? I already proved that I could do it. So it was weird and I didn't know why I was feeling that way because why wouldn't I want to play in another World Cup? Why didn't I want to keep playing? Overall, I, I don't even know if I ever mentioned that to you before, but maybe I was scared because up until that point, I was always climbing up and motivated to prove people wrong and to show that I was better than the others. But now there was no up. I was at the top, and people were motivated to get to where I was, to prove that they were better than me, and I wasn't used to that. That wasn't the mentality that I'd shaped over the years. I was always the underdog and never the favorite, and I couldn't cope with it. It felt like I had everything to lose and nothing to gain, but I never talked about it because who wants to hear someone complain about reaching their goal and having success? I assumed no one, and that was a terrible assumption because I needed help, and I wish I could have had, or I wish I would have had, the courage to seek it out because there's absolutely no shame in letting someone know that you have something going on because everyone has something going on. Some are just better at masking it than others. So don't try to be too cool or act super tough like I tried to be. And then on the flip side, if someone is seeking you out to listen, have open ears and be kind to them because it's not always easy to say how you're truly feeling, which is why I need to tell you right now how I'm truly feeling. And I wanna do some previews and predictions, baby, starting with the Gold Cup semifinals, which is the US versus Costa Rica and Mexico versus Jamaica. Now, because I could go on and on and on about the state of soccer in this country, which I've done in the past in various ways. Sometimes I'm upset, sometimes I'm compassionate, but I'm always emotional. I'm gonna stay unemotional about this Gold Cup and the US's performance in it, and I think you should too. Also, I think this should go for Mexican fans as well because winning in this tournament, though a nice reward for the players and all their hard work and dedication, for us pride-thumping jingoists, USA, 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 USA! This isn't what this Gold Cup is about. It's about finding players who can help us next year when shit really matters in the World Cup. And I think the managers for both countries, Bruce Serena for the US and Juan Carlos Osorio for Mexico, have learned quite a bit about the depth of their player pool and which players are legit and which ones are not. And for me, that is great news. That said, and if I may get emotional for a brief, tiny, little bitty second, it would be nice for us to put together a 90 minute performance that we can feel good about. This group has been together through two friendlies and four Gold Cup games and a month of training. A month! So we shouldn't look like we're disjointed in any shape or size or way anymore. But back to being unemotional, the Ticos of Costa Rica will be a tough test for us. However, 
Since the Gold Cup rules allow you to bring in different players after the Gold Cup group stage, which is a pretty crazy rule. Well, we brought in six veterans to strengthen the side like Clint Dempsey, Michael Bradley, and Tim Howard, which is going to provide the team with much needed leadership. So I think we're gonna squeak by the Ticos two to one, while the rematch of the 2015 Gold Cup final, Mexico and Jamaica, is gonna end in the same way as that game did. A 3-1 win for Mexico, which is gonna set up a US-Mexico final and that's gonna be awesome. And up next, it's Manchester United versus Real Madrid for the first ever fax machine derby. You know, the first time that both of these commercial juggernauts are meeting since Ed Woodward played a fast one on Real Madrid president Florentino Perez two years ago over David De Gea by not getting the fax in in time. You guys remember that? But Perez has now gotten his revenge by giving Woodward the finger by refusing to sell Alvaro Morata to United and opting to sell him to Chelsea instead. So if I'm Perez, it's like, Enjoy that, Ed Woodward. Anyway, this match is strictly about business for both teams as they're gonna be looking to capitalize on their ever-growing fan base in America. And despite the departure of key figures from United like Wayne Rooney and Zlatan Ibrahimovic, though I heard he might be able to come back, they redo his deal. Anyway, and the absence of Real Madrid's Cristiano Ronaldo, who's taking time off to make babies appear out of thin air. I don't know how he does that. It still promises to be very entertaining. United have been on a roll in their preseason campaign so far, winning three of their three games played, with strikers Romelu Lukaku and Marcus Rashford combining for five goals. They look very good together. And as for Real Madrid, this will be their first preseason game, so obviously they're not gonna be as sharp as the United players, but we should expect a tough game, and mainly because we know that Madrid players don't mess around. I mean, their manager Zinedine Zidane sold his son Enzo. Yes, he sold his son to Alaves. So that is a man you don't give less than 100% to. And now we have Juventus versus Barcelona. The old lady and the Catalans. Catalonians, Catalans, kick off their International Champions Cup in a clash on Saturday. And yes, I know it's only a preseason game, so we shouldn't read into anything, but Juventus are beginning their life without Leo Bonucci and Danny Alves. And honestly, I still can't believe that they lost those two guys because they couldn't resolve their issues. I mean, men and their egos. I don't have an ego, so I wouldn't know anything about that. But Juventus have Rugani and Desiglio who are willing to step in and fill those spots. So it'll be interesting to see how both of those guys do. Also, Douglas Costa will be making his debut, I hope. The Brazilian who recently joined from Bayern Munich is a terrific player, but there have been suggestions and a little bit of evidence that he doesn't play well in the biggest of games. And that's when Juve are gonna need him most. So we'll see how he does. On the other side, Barcelona's new coach, Ernesto Valverde, seems to have found a right back with Nelson Semedo joining from Benfica, which after seemingly giving up on getting Arsenal's Hector Bellerin, they're gonna be hoping Semedo can finally replace Danny Alves because they haven't really properly done that yet. So he'll be looking to make his debut as well. However, in regardless of the big names that are gonna be on display, all eyes are gonna be on Neymar. The Brazilian superstar who has 185 goals and assists combined in 186 games for Barcelona, and that is a crazy ass stat. Well, he has been the subject of the biggest speculation this summer and what would be the biggest transfer in history if he seals a move to PSG. His every movement and everything he says is gonna be the highlight of many discussions, mine included. But all we want, Neymar, all we want for right now is to be entertained. It's the summertime. We wanna see those skills, we wanna see those tricks. Come on, entertain us. And that Band-Aid over your nose. Why don't you wear that anymore? It's a good look. And finally, it's Chivas Guadalajara versus Toluca. Because Liga MX East is beginning this weekend. And for those of you who may not know, Liga MX East is the most watched league in the United States, more than the EPL and MLS and everybody else. It's insane. And that's a fun fact, and you guys know I love fun facts. Also, a quick brief on the Mexican League. The Liga MX East calendar is split into two competitions. The Apertura, which starts now and runs to November with its playoffs La Guia in December, and the Clausura, which runs from January to April with its own playoffs in May. Chivas Guadalajara, the all-Mexican side, that's right, they only play with Mexican players, won the Clausura in May. It was their first title in 11 years and their 12th overall, which tied their rivals Club America's record. But Chivas face a tough task of retaining their title. Their star striker, Alan Pulido, is out injured till November, and he's just one of four players who won't be fit to start the season, while five other players, Jair Pereira, Edgardo Marin, Alejandro Mayorga, 
uh, Rodolfo Pizarro and Orbelin Pineda will be rejoining the squad after they finish their duties in the Gold Cup with the Mexican national team, which from Chivas' perspective can't end soon enough since they haven't been impressive in preseason, drawing three and losing one in the lead up to the Apertura. However, if there's anyone that can pull a rabbit out of the hat and have them play well despite all these issues, it's manager Mateus Almeida. The Argentine manager led them to a drought ending league trophy last season and given the club's lack of major signings, he won't be afraid to give the youth players a chance in the first team in the absence of the senior players that are missing. But let's be honest, it's only because he has no other choice. He has to play them. And this weekend they face Toluca in what is a replay of the Clausura semifinals in May, which Chivas won. So this can only be considered as a revenge match for Toluca, and they're gonna be coming for blood. And with the addition of Santiago Garcia, who joined from Werder Bremen on a free transfer, along with Chivas' weekend side, they might just get the result that they want to start the season on a high note. I mean, that's the result I would want. It's gonna be on the road, so it'd be a big win. All right, that's it. Enjoy your weekend, and please look for me in Coke Esports and PSG Esports to stream this Sunday from Miami, because the winner of this tournament gets to join PSG for a year. What? That is rad. And of course, please continue to be the warmest of warm ballers. Later.